Welcome everyone. I am Pastor Ivy Rivera. I'm a Taino Arawak psychic medium. This is Roots Revival Interfaith, where we believe in the three truths in the universe. That is intuitive intelligence, numerology, and astrology. If you follow these three truths, they will not only lead you to your own healing, but also your life contract. And ultimately, if you alchemize what you're supposed to in life, you'll be in a great position to help others in great character and integrity to move forward. I hear birds in my fireplace, so don't be surprised if something crazy happens. You guys could probably hear them chirping like they are here because they basically are. This house, super old, okay? Nothing I could do about it at the moment. Always a drama here. So today, what we're going to be talking about is deprogramming for women. So this service today didn't come from spirit directly as much as it came from quite a few people asking me about this within like a week. So in a short period of time, uh, all women had come to me and said, where is your class on deprogramming? Where is the show on that? Where is the church service on that? I've been on YouTube. I can't find it in your playlists. You know, what happened to it? And I said, there isn't one. I talk about it all the time, but only in little snippets here and there as it applies to whatever other topic I'm discussing. And they said, well, can you do one? And I thought, yeah, I really... I'm surprised I haven't by now. So um, this came about that way. And I take that as a huge sign that this is exactly the right time for this uh, church service to come about. I do want to encourage you guys to post your prayer and healing requests. I do get to them for several weeks in the comment sections, even if you're watching this after once this is published. Donations are appreciated. And again, if you're tuning in a little bit late, please give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment of any kind, share this video, and do subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Deprogramming for women. I want to lead you through the deprogramming from toxic, damaging, capitalistic, patriarchal, religious, and government structures and into a reprogramming of your self-esteem, your sense of value, and ultimately your prosperity. So there are a couple things before we get into it to understand. When it comes to deprogramming, what you do in one area of life, you do in all areas of life. And we like to think of deprogramming because it can be overwhelming as something that we could just sort of focus on here and there. We're mildly aware we're working on it. You know, we're slowly getting better at it. We're, we're starting to pay some attention, even though our parents didn't and our grandparents didn't seem to, and society doesn't appreciate it as a whole. And what you really have to understand is that it's kind of an all or nothing thing. You're either in and you are doing this all day, every day, paying attention, being mindful, deconstructing, replacing, reprogramming, or you're, you're kind of not. You're just kind of floating about out there and you kind of have a bare minimum concept that this thing exists, that there are problems and there's something you need to deprogram from. Okay, so understand that if you have not deprogrammed in one area, you have probably not deprogrammed really at all. And all areas of your life are affected if you are a woman who has not dealt with this yet. So I'm talking about your money. I'm talking about your health. I'm talking about your relationships. Okay. Your future. Everything is affected by this. It's kind of like people like to think of life as being categorized. People like to say, well, I have my family and then I have my job and then I have travel and then I have my health and then I have, no, 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 no. It's a spider web. Everything is connected, interconnected. And one thing feeds the other. And if one thing is off base, everything else is going to be negatively affected by that. Okay. 
So that is a great metaphor for life, but that is the perfect metaphor for deprogramming as a woman. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention before we go ahead and get into it is that a great model for you to use is that if you are tied up in these capitalistic, patriarchal, government, religious systems, you know, that are taking women down deliberately, constantly, will always, are designed to do that, that's how they thrive. If you're investing in them by not changing, not getting educated, okay, um, you are essentially codependent. So you are within a toxic codependent system and that's how you would relate to everything. So I think it's an easy way to think of deprogramming de as a woman is almost like I'm getting out of if you ever had a sick relationship with your parents or your family or a lover or spouse, it was real codependent. It was gross. It was sicko love, right? It's toxic for both people involved. That's how you can best think of deprogramming. It is a system of codependency. And you want out. Okay, so, you know, what we're really looking at here is, like, a great example of this is, like, if you're still feeding, um, you know, capitalism, as a woman, it's mostly consumption from making you feel ugly or making you feel fat or making you feel like your skin tone is too dark, or making you feel like you're not attractive enough, you know, for men or whatever it is, okay? You don't look rich enough, okay? So it's all about consumption. Um, if you're not deprogramming, you know, you're going to have this Disney mentality in the back of your head looming over you like a dark cloud your entire life because you start getting programmed with Disney concepts uh, from birth. So like, I am the princess and I need to be rescued by this knight in shining armor. Okay. So uh, things like this. Okay. You have to be active. All right. Let's start breaking it down. Let's talk about the different areas where this is happening. I understand for some of you, you're like, wow, this is really like rudimentary stuff. Like I already know all this. That's great. But not everybody does. So we're going to go over the basics, and then um, we're going to talk about uh, effective methods for deprogramming um, for you, and hopefully you can help other people using these tools and techniques. So capitalism, let's get started with that one. Don't forget, women own capitalism. We run the world. Everything is about us. Everything is about us, okay? So don't overlook your power in this, but essentially the goal of capitalism in regards to women is to break us down so that we have no self-esteem and the only way to gain that self-esteem is through consumption, overconsumption, purchasing products purchasing plastic surgery, purchasing certain types of food or designer clothing or, you know, exercise equipment, pills uh, to lose weight, you know, stuff for hair loss, and they'll cause the problem. So it's a narcissistic relationship of codependency, right? They cause the problem. And then, like, for example, there were six different types of shampoo I was using in the last couple of years, all of them causing hair loss. But they also sold the remedy for that hair loss. So they're causing your hair to fall out. Now they're getting sued. And then they're selling product for hair regrowth. Okay. This is the kind of stuff that's going on all the time. You have to be more aware of what you're consuming, what you're purchasing, what you're investing in, what you're putting in and on your body. So essentially, they're breaking down your confidence. A uh, great example of this is like in the media growing up. I never saw a brown, thick <laughs> or chubby 
Hispanic girl with big curly hair ever, 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 ever. Okay. Not in any magazine ever, not in the mall. It didn't, it didn't matter. You wouldn't see it. Now things are getting a little bit more balanced in that area, but you know, now women of color, for example, are getting even more roped in right to consumption because of it. So, uh, the media represents, chooses to push ideals, which are typically white, thin women, light haired, light skinned. And if you don't look like that, um, and if you're not young, so it's young, white, and thin, if that isn't you, then you've been told you're ugly, you're not good enough, and you have to somehow achieve you know, the looks up to that rank by purchasing all of these products. So what are the roots, for example, of uh, this capitalistic method in regards to women and purchasing for beauty standards? It's upholding white supremacy and patriarchy. And we're going to get into that a little bit more here in a minute. It's also supporting breeding. So what they want also from us is to quickly have as many children as we can. And if you look a certain way, and if you act a certain way, and if you purchase all of these products, you're going to be able to reproduce at a rapid speed by the age of what, 30? I mean, I, I think at least it used to be, you know, by 31, 32, right? Because we're told we fall off at 30. Um, and then they can use your children for capitalistic labor and consumption purposes, okay? So it's all for breeding purposes. And... Again, the foot soldiers on all of this, who perpetuates this the most? The media, straight men, and thin white women. Now, some of the things I'm going to say today may be a little uncomfortable to hear, but that's part of deprogramming, is being comfortable with whatever your role is in all of this, okay? You can't get rid of it. You can't correct it until you can face what your part is in it, meaning sometimes you have privileges in it. You know, sometimes you may have an attitude of entitlement in it. And that's fine. You know, we're all in different places, but this is part of the work. So we want to, and I would suggest that you guys do a little bit of homework uh, for yourselves. And the first bit of homework I'm going to have you do is um, tonight, you know, go find a journal, write down the different ways you feel capitalism has negatively affected your sense of esteem. How has capitalism made you feel overweight, unattractive, too old, to be of any value, whatever it is, okay? I want you to look at that, too poor, okay, so you'll work harder, You'll be, you'll, you know, keep the machine going. How have you been negatively affected by this? I also want you to be open. If it gets uncomfortable when you're doing an exercise like this, for example, you may start having flashbacks to your childhood, to your puberty years, especially, right? Um, to your 20s, you may start having some flashbacks or hear things that people said to you, things that were shocking or hurtful, tearing you down. A lot of it may have come directly from family, okay? Um, even, the, uh, or especially, I want to say, the women in your family, because they were so beat up and abused by these systems, a lot of them turn really ugly. If they haven't deprogrammed themselves, you know, the women may be worse than the men. And the people who are supposed to love you the most could be the ugliest and make you feel the worst about yourself. So I want you to 
be open. That's part of the healing process in doing this. It's not just like, let me pinpoint my triggers. It's also like, feel the trigger, allow yourself to release. You know, if you have a good therapist, this may be a great week to like mm, schedule an extra appointment or make sure you're going to get in there soon. You could talk about the feelings that came up while you were doing this. Take care of yourself while you're doing this. This can be heavier and darker than what you think. You're tuning in tonight. You're like, this is good. This is awesome. I love this. You know, power to women. And then all of a sudden you're like a basket case going through these things. Okay. So be prepared for what may surface. Um, I saw a meme or something, some post the other day where it, it was for Native women and it said, like, don't tell your daughters this summer they're getting too dark and they should stay indoors. And I had a full on flashback uh, to when I was a kid and my mother ended up going to court uh, to fight a white male neighbor who was attacking me for how dark I was. And, uh, you know, that changes the way you feel in your own skin, even if you fought it, even if you had people backing you, you know, even if you can rationalize it or you can come at your emotions from an intellectual place, it's still there and it'll just pop up like whack-a-mole, okay? Rear its ugly head every now and again. And um, some of this you may have buried, okay? So, all right, let's move on to the patriarchy. What is the goal of the patriarchy in programming you as a woman? It's to brainwash the stronger gender, the female gender, stronger research shows in every way. It's to brainwash the stronger gender into being weak, broken, and the submissive one. So the patriarchy works through the government systems and religious systems to ensure Women are at the bottom and are trapped, cannot get away. All right. So let's talk a little bit about how that is. And then we're going to move on to the different things that you can do because really the religious and government systems are all connected here to the patriarchy. So we're not going to spend too much time on this. Um, we see that, you know, the government gets involved to uphold the patriarchy by taking away, for example, women's um, finances and ability to create wealth. Therefore, there's no generational wealth. So for example, women weren't allowed to have their own bank accounts here in America until the late seventies. Singles. If you're, so if you're not married, you're taxed more. You don't get any of the tax breaks that married people do. These are just a couple ways. Um, we all know that women who have kids are poor. Children basically break you financially. So one of the ways to take a powerful woman who's doing well and wreck her is to get her pregnant, you know, give her a couple children. Um, women who are homeless, the majority um, are poor from abuse from men, financial abuse. Um, they have kids. So we know that having children will essentially uh, decrease our financial status and it may very well wreck us and make it impossible for us to ever get wealthy and pass down generational wealth. Okay, so we're told that we will get all kinds of perks and benefits by the government if we have these children, but once you do, you're not given enough maternity leave. You're not given any kind of free medical coverage. Um, it's very, very expensive to have a child. You're not given any kind of, you know, help with child care. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. It's a terrible idea. So they make sure they keep you down in that system. Uh, let's talk about housing. Another route to wealth is real estate and land ownership. 
So women were not allowed to own land or be on the deed, the title. They could not have a home of their own, a property of their own until, again, the late 70s. Uh, here's a little piece of good news. This may be the only piece of good news, so let's bask in this. Okay, let's hold on to this for a minute. I struggled to find some good news with this topic today. Um 50% of single homeowners in America now, as of 2024, are women. So they are living with other women, or they're living with their children, or they're living with themselves. Um, yeah, 50% of single owners are now women. Um, so what should we do with that? Celebrate it and expect a tax in that area. Now the government will be going after that to break that down, to prevent that from happening. They're also doing it with education, by the way, um, to make it harder for us to gain access to certain schools and funding and things like this. Um, all of these things are under attack. And if you're the type of person who's like, well, I'm not political, get political, do it now, you know? Um, so also another area where we're seeing women trapped is through uh, free labor. And the free labor is really coming, especially with um, married women, women who have children, um, because married women and most divorces are pursued, I believe it's like 80% or something by women. Um, women are no longer willing to do the free labor. So that's the cooking, the cleaning. They're often the highest earners also. And um, the men aren't helping. So women are just out. They're done. Um, but a lot of the damage is already done. So the free labor is also, you know, trapping women, making them sick. Um, you know, research shows that women have uh, the majority of autoimmune disease, cancers. Whenever I see a woman who died way before her husband, you know, I'm very suspicious. He basically killed her off. You know, it, it's just through her system, um, women are known to pick up on the stress of everyone around them and men abuse the system. Um, so, you know, it's the free labor uh, in the marriage as moms, uh, but with the promise usually from, you know, the government, society, religious systems, our families perpetuating this idea that if you get married and if you have kids, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be the queen bee. You're going to have everything you ever wanted. Don't you want this? You don't want this. What's wrong with you for not wanting this? Because everybody's going to drop you like a ton of bricks. You're nothing, um, but free labor. Okay. So, uh, that's another area where they're working it pretty hard. Um, and this allows men in the patriarchy to rise higher and higher and higher with their health and their wealth and riding off the backs of women and carry on their legacy through these children they are typically not raising. We also see this in forced birth. Roe v. Wade was overturned a couple years back. Right now, they're working on eliminating the, um, it was the abortion pill, and they're trying to prevent any kind of birth control at all um, from getting in the hands of, um, you know, the average woman. And uh, even for younger women, they are going to have to get like parental rights to get access. There's just all kinds of stuff going on. So um, they're getting rid of anything over the counter. And they got rid of uh, in vitro in some places. Okay. Now uh, you may be like, well, what's the point of that? I mean, if they're trying to force you to have kids, why would they get rid of in vitro? Because it's, it's not a system is my understanding of this, where you're reliant upon um, men, you know, they, they want you again, this is a patriarchy. So they want you with men. Um, they don't want you having a lot of women who are doing things like in vitro or going to a sperm bank, you know, they're having more autonomy and all of that. Um, they're doing it their way. So um, abortion has been eliminated, even in cases of uh, rape, and that includes for children. So in a lot of places, um, the youngest, like little girls are being forced also to carry 
um, those pregnancies to, to birth and a lot of those situations aren't just like any old kind of rape. It's, it's incest and things like this. And this leads me into, um, the right religious Christian nationalism as my next, um, biggest part of deprogramming that we need to be focused on here. So we'll get into this in a minute. Okay. So forced birth, um, and this is going on constantly. If you're not aware of what's going on in the headlines in different states, especially here in America, take a look at this. Okay. It's absolutely going to blow your mind. Um, but again, we do have a responsibility and we have to hold ourselves accountable for knowing what's going on and for fighting against it, not just for ourselves, but for our sisters and for the future generations of girls who are being victims to this. Um, then we see with divorce. So, you know, we got, I want to say even in, even in New York, we didn't have uncontested divorce until like, was it 2003? I don't remember. I mean, correct me if, if you guys happen to know this off the top of your head when we got uncontested, but you know, it wasn't easy to get uncontested divorce here in America, which means if you're not familiar with this, it means that if two people say we want to divorce just because we're not getting along and we don't have to have big dramatic reasons of like abandonment or cheating or financial, you know, abuse or fraud. It's just because we want out, we want to end this contract. You know, you, you then don't have to prove that the other person did something horrible to you. Okay. Well, now they're reversing uncontested divorces in a bunch of states. And this is a way, um, and I want to say, I think it was Texas who um, got this pushed uh, pretty far as a, as a like ban for pregnant women recently. This was about three months ago. So pregnant women can no longer have an uncontested divorce with their husband. Now, we also know that the number one cause of death for pregnant women is from their spouse, from their lover, from their boyfriend. Okay. So we are at super high risk for increased battery and harassment and all kinds of things, but it's just death. Um, so they're trapping us. And this is not, you know, if you're saying, yeah, but then, you know, if we're letting women die in these systems, then what, you know, how is that helping? How is that raising our numbers or the children that we can birth if, if we're dead? You know, well, it's a, like a cautionary tale. They're using women and what can happen to us as an example. They're trying to force us through fear back into a submissive position. Never gonna happen. Okay. A lot of people, my tribe included, I'm Taino, we would prefer suicide to this, okay? We, it's never going to happen. But what you're watching here, if this all sounds absolutely horrible, because it is, you know, is like the last rumblings of the final battle. You know, war has many battles in it. And we are in the rebuilding, the revolution, the new world being created. And so what you're seeing is the fall of the patriarchy and capitalism in this way government systems, the media, you know, people being dazzled by stars and all of this, all of it's being exposed. And so the change is here and we're watching sort of the final battles. And so they're just trying to trap us, abuse us, kick us while we're down and, and hope, you know, that we'll get some back into submission. Um, so, you know, the final piece of all of this in the patriarchy is religion. And I'm not going to break down every religious system throughout the world. If you could think of one, it's probably toxic. If you can think of one, it's probably patriarchal. If you could think of one, they probably hate women and girls, okay? And it's based almost exclusively on that and victimizing us and building off of our backs and our labor. And um, we see this here in America, for example, with the right wing Christian nationalism. And so Christian nationalism trying to take over everything, um, you know, in the government doing a fairly good job. We're in the heart of it. You know, this may be the end of democracy as we know it, um, if we can call it democracy. But uh, I think that with the Christian nationalists, 
And if you look deeper into it, you can even look at like 19 Kids and Counting, for example. Is anyone familiar with that show? Um, you can see how they've been pumping out as many kids as they possibly can and training them up to be foot soldiers in the government um, since like the 30s. I mean, so what we're seeing right now is like uh, a fruition, you know, of all of that. And um, what's really happening here is that, you know, it's um, becoming an issue where, for example, and this was, I believe, a week ago, a lot of our tax dollars are even going to Catholic schools, you know, so they're getting bills passed that are allowing for our tax money to fund these Catholic and Christian private schools, for example, and our public schools are just deteriorating and deteriorating. Um, so stuff like this is going on all the time where there's no division of church and state. And the goal of Christianity, the goal of Catholicism, Christian nationalism, right? But basically every other religion um, in the world is to keep men at the top and women at the bottom and women as free labor and breeders for the capitalistic system. And, you know, they're protected by the government in doing so. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. We're going to see an increase, I think, in a lot of like cults. And um, we are seeing more exposure with, you know, different fundamentalist cults out there. But um, the numbers are so high and they have infiltrated the government to, to such an extent um, that, you know, it's a significant problem that I don't think is ready to tip uh, anytime too soon. We also see in regards to this uh, rolling back child marriage laws. Now, we didn't have any protection in America, for example, um, from child marriage so a girl could be married off in her teenage years, if her parents okayed it, um, as late as 2018. Okay. And we only have 10 states that protect girls. <laughs> okay. So 10. Um, and they're trying to ro roll it back, roll it back. Even California doesn't have it. You could basically marry a kid. Okay. In California. So, I mean, in Ca California is, you know, pretty progressive, definitely left um, in so many ways. So they're rolling back the laws protecting children. They're also rolling back laws um, for child labor. So, um, you know, this again, these are ways to trap girls at a young enough age so that they'll never gain wealth. They'll never get out of the system. If People can be predatory in convincing young girls that they need to get married, they need to have kids, as many kids as they can, as quickly as possible. Um, those women have very little hope for ever getting out of the system. It can be done, but that is the goal. And that's why also there's all this talk of women hitting the wall when they're 30 and all of these predatory men looking for younger and younger and younger women because um, they don't know any better at that age. Their brains aren't even done developing until 25, 26 years old. The judgment part of your brain isn't done developing. So um, it's just a predatory cycle is what it is. All right. So um, one hand feeds the other in uh, government, religion and the patriarchy to keep women and girls down, subjugated. All right, let's talk about reprogramming yourself. How do we do this? Let's get to the good stuff. Um, I do want to encourage anyone who tuned in a little bit late to please post your prayer and healing requests. I will be manifesting and praying and sending out healing over those. I do go over them for several weeks checking on the comment section, even if you post after this is published. That's fine. Donations are appreciated. And I do encourage everyone right now to give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment of any kind. Uh, if you want to switch over to YouTube at Ask Ivy, that may be smart. So I don't know when TikTok's going to shut me down, but they always do. Um, 
So uh, also, if anyone did want to volunteer to be a moderator tonight, I can't take questions off of Instagram or TikTok. I need them switched over to here at YouTube. I can see YouTube and I can see Facebook. Okay. So I want to encourage you guys to post uh, your questions and comments on this topic now. I will be getting to all of them at the end, as long as they're here on YouTube and I can see them. Uh, no, Anna, I'm not giving free psychic mediumship readings tonight, but you can book a reading with me anytime at ivyriverapsychicmedium.com. All right, so let's take a look at what we can do to reprogram ourselves. Um, this is not a quick fix. I repeat, learning how to reconnect with your true self, allowing yourself to truly heal and do the shadow work is going to require that you are deprogramming. You are deconstructing from the government religious institutions, the patriarchy, okay, capitalism, your generational curses, because don't forget your families have been knee deep in this ish, okay? So they handed it down to you too. In order to really heal and do the shadow work, you have to do this part. Okay. The racism involved in this, the way it's all held up by white supremacy, okay? You have to deprogram and deconstruct from that. So, um, it's not a quick fix. And you may think you've done a great job and you've gotten over some of it, but I would be very careful about thinking with this in a linear way. Well, I got from A to B. Well, I spent a year in therapy working on this. Well, I stopped centering men, you know, or I joined the 4B movement and I stopped dating. So ta-da, you know, no, 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 no. This is like crabgrass. This is going to come up over the rest of your life, most likely. Healing is cyclical. It's not A to B. It's not a linear thing, okay? It's cyclical, and it'll come up over and over and over again when it's time for you to deal with the next level, the next layer in that onion, okay? So try not to think of it as a start to finish line type of a thing, or it's really just going to slow you down, and um, it's a way for you to be coming from that place of ego, which is the root issue of all of this. That's fear, manipulation, and control. Okay. We don't want to be coming from that place. So instead, you know, think of this as like a relay. Okay. You're going to run for a while with it. You're going to be deconstructing. Sometimes you're going to slow down. You're going to accept um, wherever you are in the flow of it and know that it is lifelong. It is a commitment to reestablishing um, what you lost, but for some of you, it's establishing for the first time in your life. Maybe you've never had self-esteem. You've never felt that you were of any real value or you've never enforced that value. Okay. Um, you've never had wealth or prosperity. Uh, so it's, it's all day, every day you're watching this. So the big hits, um, are to, self-esteem, especially in regards to self-love, self-care, feeling that you deserve to be loved. It's with a sense of value, meaning getting energy reciprocated back to you, whether that's financial, whether that's getting what you deserve at work in pay, okay? Or that's getting a, a love partner to give back to you in the same way that you give to them. I always like to say relationships are like a ping pong game. You hit the ping pong over, they hit it back to you, you hit it over. If it goes off the table on their side, you don't yell to them to pick it up. You don't go get another ball. You don't hold space and wait for them. You walk away. The first red flag is the last red flag. What areas in your life are not working? You're not getting reciprocation. There's no balance. This could be with your friendships. Again, if you do it in one area, you do it in all areas. Okay. Rule of thumb. So where are you not getting energy back in return? Okay. This says you do not know your value. And the third category is prosperity. So what we're looking to do in deprogramming 
and reprogram is to recoup the losses, the financial losses. We want to start accumulating resources, you know, generate wealth for ourselves, create generational wealth going forward. So let's talk about number one. What can you do to reprogram yourself? Number one, you're going to have to fight back. Fighting back will probably look like therapy for most people. This could be self-help books. This could be seeing a good therapist. I wouldn't rule out trauma therapy on this. This is some kind of deep search and allowance of your feelings, not intellectualizing your feelings, figuring out what your triggers are, therapeutically processing the damage all of this has done to you, especially in those three areas that we talk about, self-esteem, sense of value, and prosperity. You're going to have to fight through deconstruction, understanding intersectionality. What do I mean by that? If you never heard of that, those concepts, we're talking about something like women of color being at the bottom and being the most abused. Okay. And if you are a white woman, you are the biggest foot soldier for the patriarchy. But in a lot of ways, you know, you're, you're also kind of the most trapped because you reap benefits from these white men, from the patriarchal system. So you have to understand, again, what your role is in all of it. And you can't be, you know, offended by those things, or I don't care, be offended by those things, you know, what? I'm white. I'm the I'm the biggest foot soldier. Yeah, you are and you need to deconstruct that. And you're in upholding the patriarchy doing more damage to women of color than you realize. And ultimately to the world. So you have to own that. Okay? Instead of being like, "Well, I'm offended by that. I'm not racist." That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about facts and how we correct a problem. Okay, so you're you're gonna need to work through that. If that's really upsetting to you, again, see a therapist about it. But you need to become an anti-racist because this is a racist system. You need to become a feminist unapologetically, and it's going to be in processing all of these things that I just mentioned in regards to fighting back, and then accept them as truth. Okay. So it's getting comfortable in the discomfort. It's acceptance, acceptance of who I am, acceptance of where I am, acceptance of how I may benefit, acceptance of how I'm contributing in any way, shape, and form, you know, accepting the work that's going to have to be done, how long it may take, what I can do, what I, what I can't do. Okay. Finding a balance for all of this, but acceptance. After that, best way to fight back is going to be taking responsibility. So that's, that's again, knowing what you can do and then doing it unapologetically and maintaining it. So that's going to be a lot of boundary setting. That may be a lot of cutting people off. So you're going to have to hold yourself accountable every day, you know, for maintaining these changes you want to see. And um, number two, after you decide you're ready to start fighting back, and this is the hardest one, you're going to need to speak out. Now, speaking out looks like a lot of things. I just want to remind everyone, it's not necessarily what you say. It's also what you don't say. It's not necessarily who you deal with. It's also who you don't deal with. It's not what you contribute to. It's what you don't show up for. You know, there are, it's about your body language. It's, it's about the clothes that you wear. You know, it's, it's about, it's about what you purchase. 
Okay. Anyone else who's had their eyes on the genocide, not the war, but the genocide in Gaza knows we're not eating at McDonald's. We're not going to Starbucks. You know, how bad. I wanted a caramel macchiato. This, okay. You're not shopping here and there and the other. No, no. Okay. You have to own all of that. So it's not just what you show up for. It's what you don't show up for. That's how you speak out. But you know, you're going to, again, really want to focus on what your position is in all of this. Are you a woman of color? Are you a white woman? Are you rich? Are you poor? Are you um, larger? Are you full-figured? You know, are you thin? What does it mean? Because all of this comes into play. All of it. Do you have children? Do you not have children? Are you planning on having children? Are you of childbearing age? You know, are you an older um, woman who um, still has a lot of power in the system as an older woman who's accumulated wisdom and wealth and you still have males in the family or certain types of males who are attracted to you? Okay, what is your role in all of this? Figure it out and then speak out from your place of power. Don't try to be someone else in this. Just speak from what you know, okay? Our greatest positions of power in this revolution across the board are in people understanding how they are affected, what their role is, how they contribute, and what they can do from that position. Change is going to come from all of us being who we are, where we are, and pushing for a better agenda. So you also okay, are going to need to start showing up when abuse is taking place. And that can be really hard, especially if you're shy or, you know, you don't want to be the loud one. Um, doing this on like social media or doing it politically, um, you know, making sure that you're not allowing people to be abused is part of speaking out. And I assure you, that once you do that a couple times, you're going to feel the fire lit in your belly and you're going to be more empowered than you have ever been in your life. So make sure you're participating in the dialogue. Um, number three, exit rooms. Exit rooms where you're not getting paid enough. You're not being respected enough. You're not being appreciated for what you bring. This is going to look like divorce for many of you. I'm out. Okay. Um, they're not carrying their weight. They're not appreciating all the effort that you put in to the kids, to the house, financially, probably making more, having a higher level of education. They're expecting you to have all of that and then do 90% of the labor in the marriage, in the relationship, not just housework, but also emotional labor, community labor. You support them with friends. You know their family's birth dates, right? Are they filling your stocking on Christmas? Are they you know, showing up on Mother's Day? Are they remembering your anniversary? Do they care about your birthday? Are you giving all that back for free? What are you doing? Okay, what are you doing? Take a good look at the marriage. Also, are they voting against your rights? You know, you've got so many liberal performing men out there who go into the voting booth and massacre you. Is that your spouse? Dump them like a ton of bricks because these are... These are problems at the core of who they are, okay? This is a lack of morality. This is a lack of ethics, okay? This isn't political. This is this is literally their character, lack thereof. This person has no integrity. Why are you married to that, okay? So you may just be like, the more I deprogram, the more I realize I can't be with this person. And even if they changed, this isn't it, okay? Um Expect some differences there. You may also, in exiting rooms where you're not getting paid enough, appreciated enough, respected enough, 
you may feel you need to quit your job. And, you know, is it sometimes worth it to fight to be more respected? Uh, maybe, you know, and maybe for future generations, maybe for other women in that workplace who don't have the luxury of just dropping their job and going somewhere else. Maybe, maybe it is. Um, you're going to have to gauge that. But, you know, you may also want to fight a good fight on your walk out the door to something better. Uh, but you got to speak up on these things. Stop following. Okay. Exit rooms. Stop following people on social media, whether it be a movie star that you really like or a, a great musician, right? Or um, all these men who have these, you know, podcasts, you could hear your, your your husband listening to these toxic red pillars, you know, listening to these podcasts and speak out about that. Um, don't be following men on social media who are all about helping women. Okay. They already have too much. They're getting paid way too much for that. We're the ones who are figuring all of this out. They don't know anything about that. That's not their place to even be speaking on that, in my opinion. Be careful what you're feeding and who you're following on social media. There's a lot of money in that. Media is the gateway for all of this to either implode or improve. Be careful. Drop friends who are unwilling to deconstruct themselves. Ladies, this is a brutal reality sometimes. But if you have friends who center men Everything they do or will not do in their lives is based on a man or the, the the fantasy man. Well, I don't know if I should move here or buy a house because what if I meet someone? Uh, well, I don't know if I should, you know, just go to the sperm bank and have this baby, even though I've been waiting five years until I meet someone. So they want to like force a man into that role. Like he's going to be a terrible father and they don't care. If, if they're always in these horrible, abusive relationships you know, and they have nothing but toxicity in their lives. They're not growing. They're not developing. They're not improving. They're stuck, okay, in the programming, the cult. They're stuck. They're trapped. They won't get out because they could. Um, you may have to drop them. You know, you could maybe put them in a gray zone and just like be on the fence with them, not but not spend as much time. But at the very least, you need to stop feeding and enabling their chaos, their dysfunction, because enablers are also on the wrong side of this war. They are feeding the problem. So every time they drag you into that, they're feeding the patriarchy, right? They're feeding all the toxic systems that we talked about, and they're stealing your energy while they do it, okay? So they are the problem. Again, you're either in or you're out. Okay. Um, and one of the best ways to exit the room <laughs> entirely is join the 4B movement. I've got several videos up on this here on YouTube, at Ask Ivy. Okay. So join 4B. I even did one on my first two years in the 4B movement and what you can expect. So what is 4B? 4B started in Korea. They're having massive success. It was where women said, we're not going to have sex with men anymore. We're not dating men anymore. We're not having any more children and we will not marry. Okay, so this started in 2019. And now it is to the point where we're seeing the consequences, uh, the massive results of what they've done. 4B has been here in America, I feel, for the last two to three years. Um, women of color, though, have been doing it for much longer. I would say even the last decade significantly, maybe longer. Uh, let me know in the comments, ladies. Um, but I think that uh, it's really enjoining 4B, whether you're young, you're older, it's all ages where we are cutting off um, toxic male behavior, abusive, neglectful, voting against our rights. And we're saying, nope, you're not getting any sex. You're not getting children. I will not marry you. I won't even date you. But a lot of the older women, like mothers, for example, because when 4B hit, all these men uh, who were rejected by women went back to their mommies. Okay. So we know this from studies in Korea. So this is how, this is how it goes. Within about a year and a half, they go running to mom. They want to sleep in mom's basement, sleep on mom's couch, or they're going to grandma's, aunties, sisters, female cousins, female friends. Yeah. And, um, 
And then usually about two years after that, they're getting kicked out by those women as well because matricide is increasing. Again, the abuse against, the abuse will not stop, okay? So the abuse against these women is increasing and um, women have had it. So that may be a consideration for you to really deprogram in a significant way where you're not constantly being interrupted. Okay, by the flow of male energy, toxic male energy. Um, number four, and this is it. Okay, this is the last thing uh, I really have for you guys today. If you want a more in-depth dive into all of this, I could do something extended. Let me know in the comments sections. Um, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and get to your questions and comments if you have not already posted them. I can only see them here on YouTube at Ask Ivy. So if you post it on Instagram or TikTok, switch over here quick and post your question. I'm about to take them now. So number four, retrain your brain. Say it like a mantra, okay? Hear this all day, every day. Train yourself to hear that. Retrain your brain. So when you find yourself triggered, you find your energy drop, you feel like you just got kicked in the gut, okay? You're being abused by the system. You are being notified that your heavy mood, your heavy energy, your upset is coming from this toxic programming. And it's up to you at that time to stop, slow down and say, okay, I was triggered. I'm going to be mindful. I'm going to process where it came from, how it made me feel, what it's all about, and I'm going to retrain my brain. I'm going to replace it with a positive vision of my strength, my prosperity, okay? My future self, me loving myself whatever it is. Okay. And you're going to need to come up with a list of replacement thoughts and visions. I would highly recommend you put like maybe 15 things, make a list. This is part of your homework. Okay. And keep that list with you for like a year. You're pro you may not need it that long. Okay. It depends on how mindful you are as a person. And you can upgrade it all the time. And I would recommend that you do. Um, it's going to work double as a manifestation tool. So anytime we're writing something down or we're rereading something or we're visualizing something, we're connecting with the energy for 15 plus seconds, we're essentially manifesting. If it is something that we can have and it is within our life contract, it is within our karma, it is within our life's purpose to have. And I assure you, ladies, all of this is all of it. Okay, because you're recouping from loss that was taken from you while you were victimized. That is always a karmic payout you can claim for yourself. So you're going to have this list, you know, pull it out of your back pocket if you need to, and you know, you're gonna read it to yourself. So um, what is it, you know, that you really want to uh see happen? I would also um recommend that maybe in coming up with a list of different ways you get triggered, different ways you've been abused, neglected in the system, um, you can come up with a polar opposite list, you know, of how you plan to replace that, create wealth and abundance and value and self-esteem, and then burn it. You could even do a ceremony with a bunch of other women or girls and like everyone could burn it. I used to do this at like drum circles um, every equinox and it was something we could release of whatever uh, we no longer wanted to hold on to. And then we would be claiming what we are bringing in to ourselves. So the power in doing a ceremony, hosting a ceremony like this, I mean, really get together and start hosting something like this. This is also a great way to make new like-minded friends and not mm, sort of have to grieve as hard or as long from the losses uh, you're probably going to be taking in social and like family systems from people who won't deprogram or support you in this. All right. So I think that's pretty much 
all I really wanted to get to um, with this. Hope this was helpful. Let me go ahead and start digging through the comments section. Uh, TikTok kicked me off, which is not a shock. All right. So hopefully everybody from TikTok switched over here. So we have, um, okay, good. Some people switched over to YouTube and said, oh, this is better. Um, Vanessa had a prayer and healing request. Again, if you guys did not post a prayer and healing request, please do so now. Okay, so Brittany says, this is the fight of my life, LOL. My eyes have become so open to the programming and the mind control that this patriarchal society has placed on all of us, all of us, all in caps. Yes. Um, Brittany, it really is probably the fight of your life. And I wholeheartedly believe that so many of us reincarnated to come here at this exact moment for this exact thing. And there is nothing more important that you can be doing with your time here as a woman than this. This will lead to everything else. Um, and this isn't just about you. This is so much bigger. This is literally a calling. When people say, what's in my life contract? And what's my calling? And what's my sole purpose? And what should I be working on? This, this, it doesn't get bigger than this. Okay, so um, you're doing something that's going to change, alter the world and the future. Um, Got to get back into a matriarchal system. Okay, this is not working. And um, we're watching it die. And you are a major part of fighting in that battle and in that war. It's amazing. Uh, we also have, hi from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Hi, Anna Walker. All right. Uh, we have more prayer requests here. And I think I've gotten to um, all the comments and questions I can see because I can only, again, see here on YouTube. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. I would love your feedback. And if you guys, um, again, want an extension on this or a deeper dive, um, because we're all negatively affected, like Brittany said, on this toxic system and that includes men, even though men are benefiting from it and perpetuating it and created it, you know, uh, we see the damage it's done to them as well. And uh, they can't get out. You boys, if there are any boys tuning in here, um, you're not getting out unless you do this as well. So if you guys want to see a deep dive into that, we can go there too. Um, but any topics you would like to see me discuss here uh, in sermons at Roots Revival Interfaith, please do let me know. Again, keep posting your prayer and healing requests. Everybody give this video a thumbs up. Greatly appreciated. I will see you guys for the next service. And if you need a healing or reading uh, with me, you want to book a party or a psychic fair. In the meantime, you can go to ivrivera psychicmedium.com. Thank you so much for being here.